as a classical example of that, right? Estrogen, estradiol therapy can reverse glycan ages by 20, 30 years, which is, cool. okay, is yeah. great, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to live 20 or 30 years longer. Yeah, so I just wanted to kind of go over anything promising with, say, your omic clock. Like, um, yeah. I mean, has there been any, you know, obviously some of those biomarkers, they were still kind of trying to interpret the data, trying to work out associations, like with lifestyle parameters has there been anything interesting coming out you've seen particularly it's made a big difference with the omic age yeah you know i think that not necessarily a lot of what we're seeing is still sort of the tried and true um but i think that uh you know with now the this meta-analysis across many clocks i think that we're we are starting to to answer the question of which clock works best in what scenario. Um, mm. And I think that uh, generally, there are only really four clocks I would use now um, uh, to, to track, and that's uh, the Dunedin Pace and uh, Symphony Age, or the Systems Age clock that came from Yale. Those two, I think, are really, really good at health span, um, you know, trying to, to reduce comorbidities where I think Grim H2 and Omic Age are certainly the best for overall life span um, extension. And, and so I think that they're measuring slightly different things, but we're, I think we're learning a lot in the application of these, um, you know, now on these meta-analysis about what's working. And so I, I think we're really excited to come out um, with these clinical analysis I mentioned earlier, where we're looking at all of the biomarkers um, across individuals and showing how they're positively or negatively correlated with age. Um, you know, we have a lot of really interesting things we found here. I already mentioned the, the lipid association to Dunedin Pace. It's not associated with any of the other clocks. Um, hmm. But uh, one of the other things I think we see across the board is the negative impact of CMV um, cytomegalovirus. I think we, we mentioned this before, but I think that uh, some of the viral impacts on aging um, uh, are, are certainly interesting and, and maybe another area of focus. And so I think we're going to be going that direction. Um, and, uh, and and so I think that's a focus for us. But, uh, you know, at True Diagnostic, one of the other things we're doing are certainly creating methylation risk scores for disease as well. So that'll be one of the next things that we come out with where um, obviously, we, you know, we're very interested in measuring and quantifying age. But we also have to disentangle that from disease. And so we've created predictors mm. of disease um, that I think are, are are really exciting as well. So we can uh, try and figure out what so, improves or decreases risk. Right. And so that can be an add on to the omic. Because I know obviously that talks about diseases. And obviously I know with some of those, those biomarkers, obviously they have an association with certain diseases. So it kind of goes into more depth, you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. So what, what we do with Omic Age is we translate aging into a disease risk. Um, so it's sort of a surrogate. First, we, right. we tell you to your disease risk as a result of your age. Um, and, mm. uh, and what we're doing now with these is we're actually creating risk of that disease directly, um, where we're not including age into sort of this consideration. We're just looking at your relative risk of, of these different diseases. Okay. Yeah, that sounds exciting. And then are you, have you got something coming out with like metabolites? Uh, I, mean, I, mean, I think I remember you mentioning previously, you can kind of get an idea of say your taurine levels, that kind of thing. We are. And so that's the other thing we'll launch hopefully before the end of the summer. Um, you know, these things always take a little bit longer in launching than we anticipate, but um, mm. so maybe sometime I would say in the fall, but, um, but yeah, if anyone's ever done something like a, a neutral test where they can quantify their amino acid levels, quantify their omega three levels or vitamin D levels, um, we hope to do that too, again, through these epigenetic biomarker proxies, where we actually use these proxies to predict certain levels of, of hormones, metabolites, or clinical blood markers. Um, and so uh, that'll be the next paper we publish with our collaborators at Harvard, and we're very, very excited about it, uh, because in some cases, our predictors are better than that of even the classical biomarker. Um, oh, and so, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're really excited to, to show how some of those are significant improvements. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, I was going to do a... I haven't done a metabolite test, you know, doing one of those, is it, how do you pronounce it, I Iolo? Do you know that? Yeah, yeah, Iolo, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna, I was going to do one in the next few days and then just, just to get an idea of like, because I understand they're bringing out one for ergothionine, that's quite exciting, longevity uh, like compounds uh, like in food <laughs> and things. I eat a lot of mushrooms myself, so like, yeah, it would just be quite interesting to see some of these levels. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and again, in our omic age trial, ergothionine was the number one metabolite linked to better longevity. Um, oh, wow. So okay, I will yeah. say that as well. Uh, so we're big fans of ergothionine. Great, right? Yeah. And then um, as I said, uridine was quite another, that was a good one in your, the omic age. I'm really excited to see. I've been going uh, quite high with the, since my, got my, I think my last one was June last year, my first one. And I my uridine levels where it's lowest. I supplemented a bit over four and a half months and it went up a little bit over gradually over time yeah. but i've been going higher with the dose i've gone up to 600 milligrams of uridine to really see 
see how my how it reflects my omic age uh, coming up yeah yeah no definitely i think uh we're already seeing that a lot of those track longitudinally and that's part of what we'll show is in some of these clinical trials uh that that we can use methylation as a way to effectively track these things longitudinally mm. as well yeah and how, how do you think the omic age because you know there's other clocks on the market uh glycan yeah. age i've heard you talk about that previously i mean it's not the best predictor of um actual biological age because i've seen some crazy numbers i saw an article in the times mm. where they're looking at uh different uh journalists and one guy was in his early 30s and it was giving him a biological age of 70 but i mean if you're looking at glycans i, mean, I understand it's more like an it like from an inflammation point of view so yeah. it's probably giving you a snapshot it's probably fast moving so you can reverse the age quite significantly if you're say pregnant that kind of thing and then after giving birth yeah. it goes fluctuates very very fast whereas obviously uh, yeah. you, you know the omic or the just epigenetic clocks in general has, shows a more consistent kind of um yeah. pattern right yeah you know i'm excited about glycans as a biomarker uh but but Again, we're looking at just a couple of glycans, um, mm -hmm. which are probably, as you mentioned, more informative of certain pieces of biology. Whereas with the epigenetics, we're looking at a global level of, of sort of signaling, which might mm -hmm. be harder data to tease out, right? Harder, you know, you're using a lot more complex math and algorithms. Uh, but at the same time, I think that you're probably getting an overall bigger picture that is not as uh, effectively changed by a single intervention. And I think that, you know, estrogen as a classical example of that, right? Estrogen, estradiol therapy can reverse glycan ages by 20, 30 years, which is, cool. okay, is yeah. great, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to live 20 or 30 years longer. So the question is, are we measuring something that is lifespan related or a process, a biological process that, that's informative? And I, I think, so I, I, I think glycans certainly are a great biomarker. I think that they will continue mm. to be an effective biomarker um, and a fast growing biomarker um, and are worth paying attention to. I think they're excellent. And I think that even, you know, glycan age and, and nicolina lock, uh, they're doing great research. I even recently saw some preliminary data from a presentation that looked like it had some of the same mortality level predictions, uh, not quite to the same level of the epigenetic clocks, but still pretty close. And so I right. think that Okay. Um, as they have more data come out, we'll learn a little bit more. Um, but uh, but but I think uh, I wouldn't ignore it yet. But I think uh, it, it is certainly one of those classes of biomarkers that, that look exciting for the future. Great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting.